Hello BSS, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Brenda. I do mostly paranormal videos here on my channel and I usually post on Fridays, sometimes even Mondays if I can get an extra upload in. So if that is something that you are interested in, please consider subscribing down below and joining my little community. Also turn on your post notifications so you do not miss when I post another video like this one. Now with all of that being said, let's go ahead ahead and jump into today's video. So for today's video we are going to be talking about or discussing a sort of urban legend about three specific episodes from Mujer Caso de la Vida Real. Do you guys remember that show? Um, if you don't remember it this might jog your memory a little bit. Hispanic you may have memories of your mom watching this or watching this with your mom in the mornings or in the afternoon while she's relaxing after picking you up from school. I have vivid memories of watching this tentatively with my mom and some of the episodes even kind of alarming me or scaring me a little bit because they were meant to be watched by like your parents and not you with your parents but you know whenever my mom was watching on tv i would be watching with her but as much as they did scare me or made me uncomfortable it did also teach me lessons about a lot of different things that some hispanic parents might not want to bring to light just because of the culture but my mom was very open with me about you know me knowing what was right and what was wrong and things that i had to look out for um with family members and you know how interactions with them like what kind of interactions with them were appropriate and what weren't that is something that my mom was always really open about with me so i always knew when something felt wrong or when i needed to tell her about you know something that happened so I think that is one of the good things that came out of Mujer Casas de la Vida Real. And for my non-Spanish speakers or just anyone who didn't grow up watching this, uh, Mujer Casas de la Vida Real was basically a TV program that was hosted by Silvia Pinal. And it ran from 1986 to 2007 on all kinds of networks. They play reruns in all kinds of different networks like Univision, Televisa, Azteca, and like all these other, like Telemundo, all these other different shows wherever they could play reruns for it. And it was created as a response to uh, like a really big earthquake that happened in Mexico in 1985. So the concept of the show itself was basically reenactments of real life situations that the viewers would send in. So they would basically write in stories about real life things that happened to them. And then in the show, they would be reenacted and there would be kind of like a lesson to learn about it. Silvia Pinal always had a little phrase at the end, a little life lesson and a warning for whatever happened in that episode. And these situations range from all kinds of things, you know, it could be from good things that happened to somebody or it could be about abuse, about kidnappings, domestic violence, all kinds of things were ran in this show. It's just basically things that would happen to women specifically and how it impacted them and how they didn't get help or you know what have you so yeah this show was a big part of my growing up and i could just instantly remember the theme song for it i remember my mom turning it on in the mornings and in the afternoons and she was always watching this show like non-stop it was one of her favorite shows at the time and she was been watching it since she lived in Mexico too. I did know that, as I said, that a lot of the episodes were really raw and disturbing, but the episodes that we're going to be talking about today specifically, since there is no actual trace of them other than little clips and stuff, they are allegedly even more horrifying than any of the other ones that have been put out by Mujer Casos de la Vida Real because 
I have, I do remember seeing a lot of these very jarring sort of episodes where I'm just like, I can't believe that this aired on TV ever and that I was allowed to watch it as a child. But yeah, so the, the three episodes um, that I'll be telling you guys, describing to you guys today are allegedly either censored completely or banned altogether. Like there's no trace of them, especially because a lot of them aired on live TV. So the only way that anybody would have a copy is if they had like a DVR where they recorded the episode and then they could transfer it over to like online or, you know, they pulled it off of any of the DVDs that they put out for the episodes. For at least two of them, you can't find any actual footage of the actual episode. And lately I have been seeing a lot about urban legends from Mexican television and it, they have really intrigued me and just really gives me like chills to think about how people felt while they were actually watching it on live television and it was playing out and how they felt seeing such jarring images as I will describe to you guys the episodes and like what happens in them and so on. Okay so the first episode that I will be describing to you guys is titled La Niña del Poste or La Tunica or in English The Girl on the Post or the robe. This episode was aired uh, around 1996 and it said that it consisted of a little girl who was taken by a woman with the appearance of a witch. We don't really don't know if she was lured away or snatched away by this woman but the most chilling description of this entire episode and possibly the reason why it got taken down it is said that it cuts to a scene where you see a light post and you end up seeing the lifeless body of this little girl either thrown or hung on this light post and she has a very terrifying expression on her face and the scene we, we see before the episode ends is just of her eyes like glazed and open but you can tell that she is no longer alive and it's just her looking directly at the camera and then the episode just ends all together and we don't know exactly what happens throughout the entire episode but this is the description of why allegedly it was censored or banned from being shown on TV again but there as I said there was a small amount of people that did end up being able to see the actual episode on television and it is said that they ended up feeling really disturbed and really scared from watching the actual episode especially you know in these times in like 1996 as i said these were supposedly real life things that people were sending in and these were real stories that were being submitted by viewers so it could be that in this episode they are talking about real life things that happen because it's told that a majority of the people who go missing become victims of either rituals or witchcrafts or some kind of like sacrificing of a person and this has been a report of what could potentially happen to people that go missing like what ends up what they end up becoming a victim of. So this could be a reason as to why they took the episode down. Besides the rawness of an image of a lifeless body on a light post and a terrifying expression on her face. Because they were talking about something that maybe others didn't want people to know about. You know, about a real life thing that happens in this world. That there's like cults, that there's rituals, that there's um, people practicing bad kind of witchcraft and you know for people in 1996 this could have been something very like alarming and very shocking people don't hear about stuff like this too often in that time everyone's very like sheltered when it comes to all of that thing so it could have been a very jarring episode that people were really disturbed by and they were like i don't want to see this kind of stuff on television and that might have been why they ended up pulling this episode but yeah that is basically the gist of that first episode when it comes to like brujeria and all of that i feel like you don't talk about that you're just like you're just like no ma'am we don't mm -mm, this is a holy house you know like that kind of thing so anybody who would have been watching that who is religious at all would have 
definitely called in to complain or something and be like what are you guys showing on television like what is this all about you know especially with the implication that there was some sort of witchcraft even though they weren't saying it up front it was just a lady with the appearance of being a witch but no clear indications at least not in the description so we honestly will never know exactly what that episode consisted of since we just have the description of it but yeah that is going to be it for that one let's go ahead and move on to the second episode all right so this episode that i'm going to be discussing next actually has three different titles i'll say them all in spanish and then i'll translate them over to english so the first one is el niño del globo o los colores del cielo and the last one is Un Angel Sin Luz. So that translates to the boy with the balloon, the sky without colors, and an angel without light. But you're going to be surprised with the actual details of this episode. It is very chilling, very, very sad, and you can actually find this episode on YouTube. It is one of the only ones out of the three that I was able to actually watch. So I know many of us as kids, we were taught about not talking to strangers and you know, being warned about what could happen if you were talking to a stranger. And around this time, I feel like, you know, people in my generation, they went through the stranger danger movement and there was like a rise in kidnappers or roba chicos, you know, as you, would say in Spanish and my mom was always very adamant about telling me um, and teaching me about not talking to strangers especially because we when we lived in California I walked home from school and I walked to school with my older um, half brothers and she would always make sure that I would like hold on to his hand that I wasn't wandering off with anybody that I didn't accept toys from anyone and my mom always made sure that we had toys and that we had all of that so we wouldn't go be tempted by anyone trying to offer us a toy in order to go with them so in this moment a lot of us can remember being taught that and so yeah this next episode has a lot to do with the fact that you know even if you tell your kids not to run off with strangers if they're being neglected in any kind of way and they don't have what they you know what they would like to they could potentially still be victims of being kidnapped. I will show you guys a few clips of the actual episode if I can, or I'll insert them as I go. So the episode goes that there is a single mom. I'm guessing that the dad passed away. I don't remember exactly what she said in the beginning of the episode, but the mom is washing clothes as a living, so she's washing other people's tandas, and she's doing other people's tandas, which is just basically their laundry, and she's getting paid a little bit to be able to support her and her family, and she is doing this like all day, every day, washing people's clothes. So the opening scene is her doing that, and her little boy, her son, is just waiting like on the sideline waiting for her to be done and she has an older daughter who comes over and she's like come on like let's go um get ready for bed or get ready to go eat dinner or one of the two i don't exactly remember and the little girl points out that she misses when they would all eat dinner together and then she would go tuck them into bed and sing to them before they went to sleep and how she misses them all being together and they ultimately convinced their mom to like take a break from doing the laundry and go eat dinner with them and that's basically like the introduction just so you can tell where the kids mindset is that they don't spend enough time with their mom now ever since their dad is gone that they kind of feel neglected or they feel like they miss their mom doing stuff for them basically right as soon as they go back inside you see two men come out and they're talking about their plan that they have with the little boy and it's not said exactly what they're planning on but they're like tomorrow morning we'll do it tomorrow morning and then it cuts to a scene of them in the morning where the they're like waking up the little kid is watching TV and there's actually nothing on TV it's just like the the little 
colorway thing where you know there's no signal and the little boy is looking at the colors and he's saying all of the colors and, wh and what each color like represents basically and the mom comes and tells him that that you know enough of watching TV that he's gonna get like his eyes are gonna get tired and it's like too early to be watching TV blah 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 she sends him off instead to go check if the clothes are dry and one of the men that we saw in the previous scene he comes up to him and he's like hey I'm one of the new neighbors I just moved in that corner apartment like he's like trying to make conversation with this little boy and the little boy goes you're not a new neighbor he's like Sonia lives there like he's like yeah that's that's who I'm living with I'm his brother he's like do you like balloons and they start making a conversation about like how he sells balloons for a living how he has all kinds of colors and that he could give him one for free if he goes with him and the little boy is hesitant he goes no I don't know you like I don't want to go with you and at the same time the mom goes and tells her daughter to go call for the little boy to come back inside and um, get ready for school so they kind of like end up saving him there and so it plays out that they end up going to school whatever and the daughter comes back home crying saying that her little brother got taken that she saw him crossing the street to a, like an SUV where they had like a balloon for him and then they snatched him up and forced him inside of the car and they go to the police station the police off the bat is like um, tell me the truth like I know a lot of people just abandon their kids or they go sell them like I don't believe your story blah 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 and she's like my daughter saw him get taken like I'm not lying about this why would I abandon him and not my older daughter like why would I if I wanted to abandon my kids I would just leave both of them and the police there's just um, a point of negligence basically where that they're trying to make that the police just like isn't taking it seriously they're like lady just go home we're gonna make some flyers we'll call you when whenever we get like news about something and so they end up leaving and then two weeks pass and they still haven't heard from the cops or heard of any other updates of the little kid and the mom finally is like she she's like over waiting around at the house so she says that she's gonna go out to look for him again around town and then just before she leaves somebody knocks at the door and she goes opens the door and the little boy is sitting there with his head down and it is a very chilling little clip of him holding a balloon and his head is down and there is supposed to be a shot that was either changed or censored but when he looks, when she grabs his face and like tries to make him look up at her, there is just two sockets. He doesn't have eyeballs anymore. And it said that that was cut out or that it was changed because I watched the episode, the actual episode, and he's got like two patches on his eyes that you can't see, but you can tell that something happened with his eyes. So um, in the original episode, allegedly, it was just two holes in his head obviously implying that he had no more eyeballs and because this was apparently way too much of a shocking image they either took it off or they just changed it to him having two patches on his eyes this is a part of the episode that makes it banned apparently um as i said i did find it and it's supposed to have been a very terrifying scene for people to be watching on TV you know with their family or whatever and there is a lesson to be learned in it they actually leave him with that little balloon as like compensation for taking his eyes and they even give him a little box with money in it which the mom ends up not wanting to take because now his her son is without he's blind he has he lost his eyesight and the whole thing is about how he can't see the colors of the world anymore and he he was robbed of this and and they were cruel enough to give him a balloon and some money to say like here you go like this should make up for the fact that we kidnapped you and took your eyes one of the last few scenes that people talk about a lot when it comes to this episode is that the little boy asked 
What color was the stupid balloon that they gave me? I was like, can you imagine just having your kid taken and then have him be brought back without eyes? Like, that's just so traumatizing and so cruel of them to be like, this should make up for it. Like, then the last few shots is just the little girl and the little boy, they're like, um, she's reading a book to him and then the mom is burning the money that was given to them. She's burning it on the stove and it's just like a very somber end to the episode and Silvia Pinal at the end of it she's like make sure that you're telling your kids not to talk to strangers and not to accept anything from strangers because you never know what could happen and that is the end of that episode but yeah super creepy and eerie chilling oh, and, and let's move on to the third one because i feel like this video is getting a little bit lengthy and this third one is very straight to the point and this one is called el hombre lobo there's another title for it but i completely blanked out on what it was called what else the name of it was like um like something sonrisa but i'll put it right here this episode is said to consist of uh, a little girl and her parents who are going to go to this party and it is said that throughout this episode she is talking about how she is scared of the wolf man or the or werewolf that by the way the translation for the title is the wolf man and she's scared like she has a fear of werewolves and so the details say that she is taken to this party with her family and for some reason in the description they talk about how everybody in that party like all of the adults in this party seem to be watching this little girl for some reason there's something suspicious going on and everybody has their eyes on her and everyone's watching her whether maybe they're looking out for her or planning on something happening to her we really don't know but the parents are sitting with her at the table and apparently they lose track of her for like a second and she's out of their sight and it cuts to a clip of a like a hairy arm kind of like a werewolf hand like grabbing her and then taking her away and this is mostly kind of like a metaphor there is not an actual werewolf there's a metaphor for maybe somebody in her family that she's scared of specifically and he's at this family party that it potentially has abused her before or that she doesn't want to see and she knows that when they take her to the party he's going to be there so yeah it is implied that this person takes her away from the party and then the parents are like frantically looking for her they can't find her anywhere and then days later somebody ends up finding these black garbage bags on the side of the road and they like approach the garbage bags and there is a puddle of something red and then there is an arm sticking out of it and it is implied that this is the body of the little girl who ended up being murdered and they ended up just tossing her in some garbage bags on the side of the road like she was trash and that's the end of the episode so there is not a lot of details on this episode and there's really nothing that i could find there's like small little clips which i will be putting you know throughout this video and yeah that's like basically it there's just the description of the episode and it was pulled off because i'm guessing those images were too much for people at that time as well and it said that it was aired around 1998 if i'm not mistaken but yeah that is basically it for what that episode consists of and i think you know it's a very much a reality and it's very very sad and traumatizing honestly like how many times have we heard about you know kids being kidnapped and um, being murdered and all of this other stuff all of these unspeakable acts that occur to them but yeah those are the three episodes that were uh, allegedly banned and they're considered urban legends because people can't seem to find actual footage of it and i mean if they were banned it's going to be pretty hard to get a hold of them 
and there's even petitions on on getting them released to the public so people could watch them. I don't really know why. But yeah, other than that, um, I did want to also mention that Mujer Casa de la Vida Real, like, they, uh, they did do good, you know, as a program in itself. The shows nowadays, they just don't get to that point. Like Rosa de Guadalupe is like a lot of like small little things that people go through, but they also have a lot of very um, dramatic scary situations in that show too and I just wanted to like quickly off note uh, or off topic I guess not off topic because it still has to do with the show but Mujer Casa de la Vida Real actually did an episode on a real life crime that happened and they actually helped identify the victim because of this episode that aired and this was about El Niño del Contenedor or the boy in the container who was murdered by his stepfather and put in a box and thrown in the trash and then later on a garbage picker found him and you know called the police and they were trying to identify this little boy find out if anybody knew who he was because they had no idea like where he was from because the stepfather had traveled from another county of Mexico to Aguas Calientes and dropped him off there and then ran away with his wife and their new kids. So when they aired this episode, they actually helped identify it because somebody had watched the episode who had known them from the stepfather being in this like in this community of some sort. I don't I couldn't really figure out what it was, but they he called the police and like gave them the stepdad and the the actual his actual mom's name and they are still they have still never been found to this day and of course i'll be putting up pictures of you know what they look like obviously they have i'm pretty sure they've aged since that time and they were never found the case i think is now expired or something so they're not actively looking for them anymore but it's, I feel like it's so unfair that they still haven't been found and still haven't been brought to justice for killing this four-year-old boy just because the stepfather didn't want him. He wanted his own kids, like his own blood, and, uh, and he got with somebody who already had a kid, so I don't understand how that made sense and the mom just let it happen. She was like, yeah, um, I don't want him anymore. I want to have your kids specifically and take care of only them like I don't care what happens to my other son so to this day never been found the little boy was identified in 2001 but I would like if this could be brought back to light it would be amazing and for these people to get caught but like how cool was it that this show could make this happen and it would be awesome for them to be able to rerun the episodes i'm not sure if they still play them on any other network but i feel like a lot of things could be learned from it and as much as these episodes were eerie and scary i feel like the show did bring a lot of good things into the world obviously but yeah guys i rambled on for way too long but i hope that you guys liked this sort of video let me know what your thoughts on this sort of content i did want to do something different and this mujer casos de la vida real i just felt like it was so intriguing especially having it be such a big part of my childhood growing up so yeah guys anyways before i end the video today's comment shout out goes to this person right here Thank you so much for leaving a nice comment. As always, I really do appreciate it. If you want to be the next comment shout out, all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below, of course. And with that being said, you guys, hopefully I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to stay safe and be kind. Bye-bye.